Okay, this morning, this happens to be, it's one of those Monday holidays, Memorial, Memorial Day. Day, okay. Uh, they either need to move all the holidays to Monday or uh, move them back to, to whatever calendar day they were. Uh, and Valentine's Day is not a Monday holiday, Charles. <laughs> okay, if y'all didn't hear that, uh, she's reminding me that Valentine's Day is not a Monday holiday. Why, I don't know. Okay. Uh, this morning we're doing Alana Kara Lawanda Red Top. I went online this morning just to make sure that this fish hasn't gotten the uh, species name yet, but it's still being listed as Alana Kara Lawanda, species Lawanda. So we're just going to keep calling them Lawanda Red Tops. Uh, this was the first breeding colony we rebuilt after uh, the winter storm. And we did, judging from the fact that we only have a few small fish, uh, very little reproduction, we did them a little too early. We should have waited another month. But it was important to do them because uh, we, when we rebuilt the breeding colony, we took everything that remotely resembled a female and put in the breeding colony. And uh, some, some of those turned out to be males, and there were too many males in, in this breeding colony for the females to do well. Uh, have too many males, and the females don't have a place to hide uh, and get away from the males. Before I go into the fish, I'm going to uh, rant about something, and it doesn't have anything to do with Monday holidays. It has to do with the one out of every two or three hundred comments about people that saying we should clean things up. Pan over down that line and you see stuff on the outside of the vats, algae, and this is some fine uh, stuff from mom. Uh, pan into this corner. Uh, this is greenhouse one and you might remember from earlier videos that there used to be a whole bunch of plants there. They've all been moved out uh, into the yard for their summer vacation. Uh, all that's left is uh, six cuttings of a native Texas climbing cactus. This thing climbs 20, 30 feet up into a tree, has these interesting uh, five pointed, uh, five petaled uh, uh, star like pink flowers. And then this is a little orchid uh, that's. Uh, vanilla yeah vanilla bean orchid it's supposed to like our greenhouse conditions and so far it, it's grown some since we got it uh, may, maybe a couple decades from now it'll be big enough to have a bunch of vanilla beans and we'll get wealthy selling van van vanilla beans okay so what we've done and i promised that we would show this entire process that i didn't get around to it this morning didn't think about it and we netted, netted the fish out of their uh, vats uh, and didn't show that. But the next fish we do, we will show the entire process. Uh, we'll have to wait. Uh, right now, there are only two of us here. Uh, Carl is, is busy. Stormy is off in Austin doing something uh, on the holiday. Uh, so uh, Susie and I are doing that. And that kind of uh, get back to my complaints about people uh, complaining about it being dirty in here. Uh, Susie and I represent more than two thirds of the uh, labor that we have for the greenhouses. We do, uh, with Stormy's help, we do most of the fish. Carl works on videoing, uh, processing the videos, and major projects. And one of them will be starting uh, this week when we start trenching. Uh, for our new generator, we have to run, in, run new electrical lines for, uh, from the uh, co-op that we get our power from to, uh, to the generator and get it installed. And Carl will be doing a lot of work on that. Uh, he also takes care of mechanical things like keep, keeping our tractor running and stuff. Uh, so if Susie and I did things like sweep up the dirt back over here, uh, scrub the vats down, uh, neaten this up to the standards of, like I say, maybe one out of two or 300 people, we wouldn't have time to do fish. Uh, one of our commenters took some facts that I had given and calculated 
the amount of time we have to spend on each vat, <laughs> and it's a uh, uh, it's a very small amount of time. Our, it, it, it's a lot of work, and Susie and I do most of it with Stormy's help. She's part time. Uh, I do all the feedings, so I guess I could sweep that up and scrub down some vats and not feed the fish today. But the what we do is raise lots of really good fish, and we do it with a very small workforce. And if we cleaned to, say, aquarium standards, uh, we wouldn't have any fish. <laughs> we wouldn't be able to process them. Okay, so now back to fish, now that my rant is over, at least for the moment. Uh, what we have here is a bucket of males that came out of the breeding vat way too many. We have a bucket of females that I'm getting ready to count and you can see somebody just released some fry. Uh, this is a bucket of feeder guppies and looks like, let's see if we put a sickle in there. Looks like it's probably a little male but I'm putting in. Okay and these are the few babies we got out although they're left in the 300 gallon vat after we siphoned it down. Uh, and got all the fish out or a lot of little fish that you can't, we don't net out because it would hurt them, uh, damage them to do it. Uh, so like I said, we did this too early. Uh, normally we would have, when we process fish, we'd have uh, one, one to two inch uh, juveniles, but this vat was done, what's the date on it? So the uh, 25th, of 25th of February, so basically April, May, June, Three, three months. It's three months. We should have gone four months at that time of the year, but it's good to have processed it so that we can get rid of the surplus males. The females will do a lot better, and they and their fry will survive better. So what I'm going to do right now, I've got two empty buckets here. I see some females are carrying. I'm going to count the females. Six. Ten, fifteen, eighteen, nineteen, counting the one I threw on the ground. What is that, twenty-two? Twenty-nine. I think that's going to be a little male, but I'm going to leave him in there. 31 plus a BRU. BRU stands, okay, it's 35. And BRU. BRU stands for breeder unsexed. Yeah. Same thing with those two. I think that's going to be a male, but we'll put them in there. So three BRUs, and what did I say, 35? Yeah. Okay, 37 females, three BRUs, feels like another BRU, four BRUs and a few guppies and some fry. The fry will go back into the 300 to get bigger. Uh, I'm tempted to put these back. Okay, now so he wants to uh, set them up in an aquarium, so we'll do that. Okay, now let's go through the males. Uh, let me get another bucket of water here. Oh, look. On it down there. That's well. It's a ba either a baby ancestress, which would be neat, or a uh, baby placostomus is only about an inch long, and it was on this pipe and it slid down the side and hid. Uh, it looked to me like a uh, an ancestress, which means that we have some surviving ancestress in here. Uh, which be good because we didn't, I thought we had none. Okay, I now have my second bucket so I can sort these nails. What I'm going to do is those two are pretty nice. I'll set them aside. Big nail, not very good color. Great nail. Slow down. 
so oh, okay. And another nice male. Yes. Okay, and these are young, young males. It's going to be nice. I'm going to set them aside. Let me look at that fish again. Yes. Yeah, it's a male. You can tell yeah. from the top they have a white Oh, yes, ma'am. I'm being tutored on how to sex these fish. Okay. I like him. Yeah, he's good. Breeder. Yeah. yeah. Breeder. That's enough. I don't care for him. And these two are... Middle. Yeah, well, I, I like this yeah. one. I'm going to add him. We like... I like having about three males in a breeding colony. So let's see, what do we decide? 37, 4, and now 3. Let me record that real quickly while Susie plays around with the camera. Okay, uh, Susie, come over here. Uh, th these are, uh, it's like 10 little, I think, are females. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to put them in the breeding colony, and that'll get us up if I'm right up to 51 uh, females. The little, no, the little fish that are in there are guppies that okay. came out of that bat over there. Okay. Feeder guppies, and they'll go back in the breeding colony. This is uh, uh, some youngsters from uh, last cycle, and here are four young males from last cycle. It's highly likely out of these 10, some of those are going to end up being male. They're really, really there's, to show you the size of these fish. It's hard to sex them at that size. And I don't try, uh, you know, some people have suggested I should vent these fish to, uh, which is probing their cloaca to determine whether they're male or female. The, Problem with that is it's invasive. The fish are already being handled. Uh, everything you do to them increases stress and, and increases the likelihood that they won't make it. And we will lose a few of these fish uh, just from having handled them like this. Uh, if, if they're not in great shape, they, uh, that handling will, will get them. We don't coddle our fish, which means that uh, over a few generations, we select heavily for fish that are, are healthy and hardy and, and can handle this. All of these fish, by the way, went through the winter storm. They not only went through low water temperatures down into the low 50s, but they, 50s Fahrenheit, but they also uh, were subjected to sky high ammonia levels as we removed, because we couldn't. We had tons of dead fish that we had removed from the system and our plant filters couldn't keep up with it, especially since they were also damaged. The plants were damaged by the low temperatures too. So it's kind of a double whammy. It took the plants a couple weeks to, uh, to catch up and get ammonia back down to zero where it sits now. Okay, we're going to put these fish up. Uh, I guess we won't show me, or do you want to show setting up the, the breeder vat? Okay. Uh, We'll uh, go down this walkway. This is uh, greenhouse one. So the if you look at the labels here, they're going to go into uh, to one D six. But uh, you can see this label. This is uh, uh, German red peacocks and bat one D O five D is the row and bat and it's bat five in the row. We have 54 breeders in there. Some of those are likely to be uh, surplus males. Same thing that happened with the Lavandas. Okay, let me look. You see a bunch of feeder guppies in there, and there are going to be a lot of, there are going to be some cichlid fry among those uh, feeder guppies. Uh, there's a snail I want to get out. Except for I couldn't reach it. Okay, I've got, I should have a net here somewhere. Okay. So now we're going to set this vat up. First thing I do is turn on the water. Good. 
no, there are two valves. Uh, one more thing I get here. Um, you see, I get a lot of exercise in the greenhouses. You're clambering over vats and stuff. Uh, that is water that's coming from the sump pumped through these two inch lines. You see the line above that with the air valves. We cut that off years ago. I just haven't harvested the valves and uh, taken those lines out. We discovered that air was superfluous and it just used power uh, that we'd rather use to move water. And uh, the water is well oxygenated from the, all the movement it's splashing. At any rate, the water flows in and then you see the two white elbows over there. Those are overflows. We don't put strainers on the breeder, uh, breeder bats, uh, and some little fish go through and become feral, but there's interesting natural selection for, you know, for fish that don't uh, go through the overflows, which by the way, a lot of research has indicated is, is a genetic factor. Uh, it, the fish that will go through are carrying genes out for fish that will go through. It's the fish that remain or have genes for not, not going over the overflows. Uh, so after a few generations, our fish don't do that. Now we do in live bear vats in greenhouse too, we put strainers on uh, just because we, we want to save as many fry as we can. Okay, this is filling. This is now a, uh, this is, uh, what we call a fry cage. We have uh, two different types. This type uh, that we use in the 300 gallon bats and then another type, let's see, I've got one over here somewhere, like this that we put in 55 gallon bats. It has a bottom. So, and I put in, I remember last time we did this <laughs> video on this fish, I think I said I needed to add, I usually put uh, two cichlid hotels, which is a piece of PVC, two inch PVC with, with cylinders of aquaculture mesh uh, fixed to it with uh, uh, recycled tie wraps, recycled plastic tie wraps. We call these cichlid hotels. I usually put two of those in each one of these cages, but uh, I didn't do that last time. I think I commented that I needed to do it, and somebody's going to point out that I haven't. I still haven't gotten that done. That happens quite a bit. I blame Stormy because one, she's not here, uh, and so she can't argue with me about it. And secondly, because uh, she needs to repair a bunch of these. You see this one. It's come loose, needs to get repaired. So I blame her for not having gotten to the stack of them out there. So I have some readily available to put in. So I'm just gonna put one into each one of those. Then we hang on the side of the vat. And I'm gonna hang this one despite the fact that it needs to be repaired. We hang it where it's going to be completely underwater, but that provides refuge for the females and subordinate males, uh, juveniles. Uh, a lot of the fry go into the fry cages, but some of them don't. Uh, the interesting thing is the fish aren't that bad about eating fry. I put, by the way, this is a, a craft wire, stainless steel craft wire that's soft and pliable, easy to work with, does not rust. Susie suggested it to me a while back when I was complaining about uh, wire rusting through and breaking or snapping. And it works really well. And this cichlid hotel is made out of drain pipe. The purpose of the PVC, by the way, is to weight it down the, these, the aquaculture netting and this drain pipe floats if it's not held down. So anyway, that this provides refuge for the fish. Now I need to add some plants to this that. I'm gonna swipe 
kind of this horn work, shake it out, make sure there ain't, there ain't fish in it. Put a chunk there. Put a little in each one of the bats. And this one's ready for fish now. Oh, one more thing I need to do. I, the two, we put a placostomus in each one of these vats and I took two of them out. They provide snail control and some algae control and they also stir up the mom so that it flows into the system and gets processed. I'm going to put that guy in there. I have another one in here that I'm going to put in a vat that doesn't have and I have to go look at the database chart to see where I need one, but I want, I like to have at least one per vat. So this one's now ready for the fish. I'm going to, if you want to wait here, I'm just going to go get the breeders. Okay, I've got the bucket with the males and the bucket with the females. And I'll have to go back and get the fry and the BRUs. Again, BRU stands for breeder unsexed. Theoretically, they're unsexed females, we hope. Okay, a little fishy bit out of that. You notice that in the, there's a layer of mom in the bottom of the vat. It's about three inches deep, two to three inches deep. It's loaded with beneficial bacteria that help control ammonia and break down nitrites as well. And also loaded with paramecium that the little fry can eat. If you look between the vats, you'll see that there's uh, the white liner with a bunch of feral fish over it. And then right there uh, some mom that's mom that came out when i was netting this vat out uh, through the overflow and it will disappear somehow it breaks down in the system i think the fish keep it stirred up it gets in the water column and it just gets broken into smaller and smaller in pieces until it, it disappears it does not accumulate in the sump or in the floor gutters it does accumulate in the vats and you can tell See, right along here, I also, that's where mom siphoned out of this vat. Whereas you come up over here, on the other side of the vat, you can see the liner. Okay, I'm going to go get the other two buckets. I uh, also have a bucket of uh, feeder guppies to put in, so I'll have to go back and get that. These are the 10, actually it looks like it's more than 10, it's 11 uh, possible females, BRUs, put them in there. And this is the bucket that has the fry that one of the females let go, so I'm going to gently pour that in there. Make sure I got them all out. Now I need to go get the feeder guppies. Forgot where I was going. <laughs> and there are probably some fry in, in this bucket too. Small fry. Oops. Now I'll take care of that in a second. Let's see if we can see some of these feeder guppies. A little male right there. They do really well with the cichlids. I, I suspect a lot of them get eaten, but they, uh, we raise a lot of feeder guppies, sell them to our wholesale customers. 
And we actually have some hobbyists who are interested in them for some reason. Uh, by the way, we just a couple weeks ago, I went to New Mexico to Macaulay Springs and collected five pairs of Macaulay Spring guppies. Uh, I think that video is probably going to be posted pretty quickly. So if you're interested in some uh, wild guppies that were introduced decades and decades ago, uh, that's what they are. We lost our earlier population of them from Macaulay Springs to the winter storm. So I was happy to get some replacements. Okay, now to finish up, we have little fish that Susie's going to count into that 1A21. And then we've got to pick a, a vat for the surplus males, which we will probably list on our website uh, this week. Good fish keeping.